Let's have a look at taking apart this Tascam Porta 2 Mini Studio. Supposing you've got one of these and it needs a bit of TLC, some sort of repair, cleaning, calibration, whatever, then uh, this series of videos will help you to disassemble this. First of all, we'll begin by opening the case and uh, getting the transport out. The location of most of the screws is pretty obvious. I've accented their location with these bits of red insulation tape. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. What may not be completely obvious though is that there's another one inside the battery compartment. I've got this bit of yellow tape beside it because it's a different length. These ones are of the same size. This is shorter. The longer screws will look like this. That much of them is smooth and then there's wide ferrule down here. Um, you can see the single screw from inside the battery compartment is you know, less than half as long and uh, the ferrule extends over all of its length. Before you open it, you're probably going to want to remove these four knobs. Sometimes there'll be brass inserts in there. If that applies to you, then you can unscrew those. A pair of needle nose pliers or a 12 millimeter socket set. I've encountered little brass inserts on the Porta 1 as well and because uh, this was already disassembled when I received it I'm not sure whether there was one there or not but there might be so watch out for that and with those off if you lift that up and then slide it forward slightly um, because the plastic case is liable to catch on the underside of these transport buttons once that's out from there, then you can tip it up this way. Be a little bit careful because one of these cables is quite short going from this socket here to the meter. So you don't want to put any unnecessary strain on that header. I suppose you could prop this half of the case up against something and uh, remove the transport from there. But I'm going to suggest that it's a little bit more sensible to just get the two halves of the case separate. So let's start with how these cables on the left of the screen are disconnecting from this part, lower part of the case. The longest cable here, two white cables and a brown one, going into a three pin connector, goes into a header that's immediately to the left of this pitch control slider. There's a two pin connector that goes into the top left corner here of this record playback board got five cables going into a very long connector, I think about halfway down this leftmost edge. Grabbing the ends of that plastic connector so that I don't put any strain on the cables themselves. Moving over to this side, you can see that the meter printed circuit board, that's this long strip here, is connected to this Q printed circuit board in the top left corner. Cables look fairly strong there so I'm just going to pull those off. We've got two more delicate looking connectors, thinner cables, joining onto a shorter connector to the top left of these four tape cue controls. I'm grabbing the sides of the plastic connector itself rather than the cables so I don't damage them. And then the longer one is immediately to the left of these track arm switches. At that point, the upper part of the case comes free. Now we can focus on getting this transport out. We'll start off by disconnecting the magnetic heads. So the erase cable with these black ones coming up to here. So if you go one, two, three of these variable inductor oscillator controls, it's immediately to the right of that third one down. Cables are thin, probably not that strong, so I want to grab that with pliers to put all the pressure onto the header itself and not the cables. If I loosen that, I can pull that out with my fingers. Then the record playback head, that's the rightmost of those two, is splitting into two connectors here. They're colour coded with the connector matching the header. The connector is like the plug, the header is like the socket that's on the board. Again, I'm pulling from the plastic so I don't put any strain on the wires themselves. All three of those cables are tidied up with a little cable tidy that's in the bottom right of this record playback board. 
And some of the control signals are getting to the record playback board by this header here. So that's bottom right most on this board. And then we can see that probably the power for the motor we can establish that in a later video. The counter's connected here, but they join on to the cue board up here. So if I pull that out, that's all the electrical connections. Now we need to unscrew this and detach it from the plastic case below. So there's one, two, three, four screws. Some of these GEC transports, there's a fifth one there, but there's no mounting post for that. So it's just one, two, three, four. The screws are removed there are the same as each other. About a centimeter long, brassish in appearance, using a Phillips head screwdriver, wide ferrule to go into plastic mounting posts. With those screws removed, the transport will lift out. You can see this is made by GEC. This is a generic transport that appears in a bunch of different multi-track cassette recorders. Um, I've covered this in detail. I will add all the tear down and lubrication and belt size instruction videos that I've made about this transport to the Porta 2 playlist which will be available from my YouTube channel homepage. If you've got any queries about how to refurbish this transport then refer to that set of videos please.